Guys, the Mi Mix 2 has finally arrived, and in this video I'm going to give you my unboxing and review after 72 hours. Now, the original Xiaomi Mi Mix was a complete game changer. This one smartphone created in itself an entirely new category of phones, which since the day it was released, many, many companies have been trying to fill. But the Mi Mix 2 so far at least has had a pretty mixed reception. So after watching this video, you're going to see a poll, which will ask you if you think the Mi Mix 2 is just as impressive as the original, or if it's a little bit underwhelming. And by answering that, you'll also be able to see what other people think to the device. Anyway, let's get right into it. In terms of packaging, we really have seen better. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice, it feels fairly premium, it's got a reassuring weight to it, but at the same time, it's just got a very standard black cardboard exterior. Perhaps if they'd made it a matte plasticky finish, that would have been nicer. Nonetheless, fairly minimalist. I do like how they've written mix on the box. So the phone does come with 6 and 8 gigabyte RAM models, which is pretty hefty up there with the OnePlus 5. It also has up to 128 gigs of storage internally, but unfortunately, no room for an SD card. Okay, let's see what's inside. Okay, this is nice. I like this now. So there is some sort of message here, followed by a signature, and whilst I have no idea what it says, it's making me feel pretty good nonetheless. Let's take it out. Okay, that, that was literally... Okay, that was all it was. We've got a USB to USB Type-C cable on there for charging, US adapter, and then the phone itself, which, to be honest, I see no easy way of getting out right now. Okay, we've got the phone. Underneath that, there is another little package. Okay, so... This is pretty cool how they've done this. We've got a couple of manuals in there. What they've got here is a USB Type-C to headphone jack adapter because unfortunately that has been killed on this smartphone. And then we also have a SIM eject tool. But on the flip side, we've got a case. Okay, to be honest, it's a bit of an underwhelming case. But what I do like is they have written mix designed by Xiaomi. And if you look closely, the font actually changes from a striking contrasting gray color. As you move along it, it becomes more and more dark until it pretty much blends with the case. You ready? That is one incredibly reflective phone. And the first thing you're gonna notice is we have the same text that we saw on the case, but it's in gold here. And we also have a gold rimmed camera. I really like the look of the phone, I have to say. Anyway, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna fast forward three days now, and I'm gonna tell you what you need to know about the smartphone. Let's go. Now that we've hit late 2017, we've seen a lot of phones with this supposed bezel-less form factor. And whilst the Mi Mix did originally impress us, the pressure is really on for the Mi Mix 2 to take it to the next level. Kicking things off with that display, we've got a resolution of 2160 by 1080, which means essentially it's the same as a 1920 by 1080p panel, but it's stretched a little bit vertically. In terms of display quality, it's good, but it's really just not that great. It's using a conventional IPS LCD technology, and it's got a pretty underwhelming resolution too. Considering we are nearly in 2018 now, and the price of the handset, I was expecting better. In fact, even in terms of brightness and colour, it really doesn't fare too well. And ironically enough, when you compare it to one of its imitator phones, the Doogee Mix, which is $200 by the way, in some senses that display is better than this one. The Mi Mix 2 does have a higher resolution, but when you place them side by side and look from any reasonable distance, the extra colours, contrast and vibrancy of the Doogee Mix's display just completely outshine it. Now, using the phone does still feel great. It feels new, it still feels fresh and somewhat novel, but Xiaomi has done a bit of tinkering. You'll notice these stock wallpapers have all gone really dark around the edges, and this is to make it seem like the screen is blending into the bezels. Now, if you change these wallpapers to something with a little bit more of a flat color scheme, you'll notice the bezels here are still very apparent. Don't get me wrong, it does still have a good screen to body ratio, but the fact of the matter is when you realize its predecessor has a better one, you can understand why people are somewhat disappointed. Now, when you turn the phone over, it is straight up gorgeous. Combine that gold ring on the camera with the gold font on the back and that super shiny ceramic finish and you've got something that looks more at home in a museum. It is very reflective and whilst that did initially concern me with regard to fingerprints, in most lighting conditions they don't show up too much. Now the Mi Mix 2 is a little bit on the heavy side, not too much and it's fairly slim at 7.7mm which makes it manageable in the hands. The body is slightly more curvaceous than its predecessor which just makes it that little bit more palm friendly. Turning it over and over in the hand, you'll feel like the phone has this level of uninterrupted seamlessness which we have rarely seen on smartphones so far. Now it is worth pointing out something which seems like a bit of an odd decision. Whilst the ceramic covering the rear of the phone is extremely resistant to drops, and that's part of the reason they've used this material, for the front display, instead of using the latest and greatest Gorilla Glass 5, they've gone for Gorilla Glass 4 which is much less resistant against drops. 
Internally, as we probably expected, the Mi Mix 2 is packing top of the line components. We've got these Snapdragon 835 and 6GB of RAM, which is ample and it does feel very snappy moving through MIUI. Apps load quickly, games perform really well even at their full 60 frames per second whenever the developers have allowed it. Even with 6GB of RAM though, it doesn't prevent a recent application having to reload itself every now and again, but overall the experience is quite fast. Now some apps and games are starting to support the 18 to 9 aspect ratio which is great, but for the most part you will be experiencing that annoying navigation bar on screen while you're trying to game. One of the other things about the phone that will probably stick out like a sore thumb to most of you is the fact that it has a single camera, which is not necessarily a bad thing. We lose out on lossless zoom and all those fancy bokeh effects you can do with a dual camera, but this 12 megapixel sensor right here is still nonetheless very capable. It is significantly better than last year's Mi Mix, and it can take decent bokeh naturally, vibrant shots, and a really close focusing distance, which means you can create photos that look something like this. We've also got 4K video, which supports 4-axis optical image stabilization. The front camera only has a 5 megapixel resolution, and unfortunately its placement on the bottom right hand corner means you're very prone to getting your thumb in the way. Now what the company recommends every time you want to take a selfie is to turn your phone upside down, which to be honest I think is pretty laughable as a solution, and it definitely seems far from ideal. Having said that, when you do get it right, given its 5 megapixel resolution, the end quality is pretty good. The Mi Mix 2 has a single mono speaker on the bottom right, which sounds okay. It has a little bit more bass than my Note 8 and a tiny bit more volume too. What is cool though is that when you're answering the phone, it uses a piezoelectronic mechanism, which means the frame actually vibrates to transmit the sound and it sounds really clear and pretty audible. One thing worth noting is that as well as being fairly well positioned and easy to locate, the fingerprint scanner on the rear of the phone is lightning fast. Now unfortunately the battery has gone down from a rather staggering 4400mAh capacity in the original to only a 3400 one here, but after testing it for 3 days I can still say it's in the top 40% of phone batteries. It can comfortably last a day of moderate usage with about 20% to spare. So guys, there we have it, that is the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. And overall, it's easy to see how it hasn't had quite the same reaction as the original Mix. Having said that, with a side-by-side -side comparison, on balance this is still the better smartphone. It is faster, its design is more refined and it has a better camera than the original. Xiaomi hit a real home run with the Mi Mix, and even though they haven't quite done another one again, this is a great looking phone and still a top option in 2017. Thanks a lot for watching, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.